Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. This is Rapid Reaction brought to you by our friends at Buyers Auto. And if there hasn't been enough unlikely crazy uh, stories that I didn't think that we would ever be covering when it came to college football, Tuesday morning we had another. Uh, late Monday night, uh, Letterman Row sources were uh, telling us that the White House and President Donald Trump were reaching out to Kevin Warren to discuss bringing back college football this fall in the Big Ten. The number one issue was uh, the availability of rapid testing. They, they feel like if they could get past that hurdle, that there wouldn't be anything preventing the Big Ten from playing this season. Well, a federal government just bought $150 million, I believe, of these uh, Abbott Laboratory tests uh, that are $5 a piece. They're supposed to be distributing them uh, across the country to various states. Well, it's possible that 250,000 of them could be diverted to the Big Ten. And if that is the case... It's hard to see what else could be out there that might keep the Big Ten from giving this season a try. Uh, Berm, <laughs> we're now covering the president talking to Kevin Warren. I mean, I've, I am so sick and tired of every issue being a political issue. I am all for this issue being a political <laughs> issue. Um, I think it's clear that Ohio State and the Big Ten is an important part of uh, the country on both sides of the political aisle. And I, it's fascinating. I mean, I don't know what else to say. We're in the middle of um, the middle of the end of times, clearly, but here, you know, Hey, if that's what it takes to get a conversation started. And obviously the big 10 had a meeting on Tuesday morning, uh, you know, so I'm all for it. I don't care who's the one uh, doing it. I, it doesn't matter who does it. Someone else is going to take credit for it. So who cares? Let's just play football. Uh, and play football in October because the Buckeyes deserve a shot to play for the national championship. And ultimately, that is all that I care about. Right. And this – I shouldn't maybe say that testing is the only issue here for Big Ten presidents. Uh, Certainly a big one. But it is, it is believed by the people that were part of this call uh, and helped organize it that that is the largest looming issue for the Big Ten. Uh, if you'd like to make sure that – everyone is safe and that when you play on a Saturday that there is no COVID present, which means that you can't pass it on if it's not around. Um, you know, the ability to test on a Saturday morning and get the results back in whatever, five to 15 minutes. Again, I'm not a medical expert, um, but that, that seemed to be one big hang up. You could test three times a week. And even if you can't necessarily afford it, like say, I don't know, Rutgers, um, this might be, this might be hey, if, if Central Arkansas can afford it, Rutgers can afford it. Well, you know, Central Arkansas and the Big Ten are not the same, but I did make that, that joke on, on Saturday night, and I stand by it. But it's certainly different for but the potential of 14 teams and traveling in the Big Ten. And it does change, Spencer, um, you know, maybe even the timeline up to October from November. This changes everything, I think, because if, if, the, if this is what's going to happen and the, and the federal government's willing to give the Big Ten tests, rapid tests that are FDA approved, like that literally changes everything. The, the biggest thing was, you know, you don't want these kids getting COVID. Well, like you said, it can't, it can't get to them if it's not there to begin with. So if you can get everybody tested three times a week, you get these rapid tests and, and you make sure that it's not on the field, well, then you can't spread it. And so I think this literally changes everything. And I think, uh, you know, the political side of it, you know, it, it was already political when the reports came out about, you know, senators from different states and governors of different states, you know, it being in contact with these university presidents. You know, why not just make it a little more political? You know? <laughs> why not? I, I did not ever think in a million years that it would come to this. And I wish that somebody could have maybe filmed my reaction when I was told that this was going to happen this morning and then just sitting around waiting. Cause you know, you know that as soon as it's over that this president likes to tweet about it. I'm like, well, are we going to, I'm going to competing. I'm going to get scooped by the president of the United States. How does this work? I don't, it is such a bizarre feeling. All of this thing is all of it's been bizarre since March, but it, it almost. Since March it, of 2016. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, the way this has worked though, Berm, I mean, you talk how little we want to, talk about politics on this show you know you almost we've had lawsuits and now the president stepped in this week it was almost like outside forces were going to have to play a role in this because 
presidents were unwilling to take the risk and somebody needed to help guide them there. I mean, I think we've, we've been obviously aware of the fact that so much of this decision, when it was made, how it was made, was about potential liability. And to have these sort of tests, whether or not the Big Ten is getting them from the White House directly or from Abbott Pharmaceuticals or whoever they are, uh, you know, paying for them, marking them up. Who cares? $10 a test is still worth it for the Big Ten. Um, with the talk about the amount of money that these people are going to make if they play football versus how much they're going to lose if they don't and how much they stand to lose in the event of some liability issue. Uh, I don't really know much about what is driving these conversations. That's more your, your part of the, the party here. Um, but the reality is if it takes Donald Trump to get involved and Congress to get involved, I am all for not sticking to sports. Well, you know? here's, here's, here's the thing, Berm. The Pac-12 was not indicated in this. He has not had conversations with Larry Scott. And, you know, it's just – you almost can't avoid the quiet part out loud here. Like, he's in a two-point race in Michigan. you got a close race in Wisconsin. you got a close race in Minnesota. Where are those states? The Big Ten footprint. So, if you can get football back, I mean – Yeah, I mean, we, it is we really – nobody, Nobody's complaining we, about the Pac-12 not playing. Everyone's like, I screw the Pac-12. Let's talk about the Big Ten. But that's the thing. Like, you can't have this conversation without mentioning those things. Like, you, it, it's almost unavoidable. And so, you know, if it gets football back, that's fine. Um, but, but is this a, we want football back or is it a political prop? Maybe we don't care because right, we want football the fact back. Is, but the fact is, and this is why I think this is great for everyone. Austin, I'm going to jump in before you tell everyone to shut up. Uh, the, the fact is, no matter which side of the political aisle people are on, they, they're already pointing to it being a political issue. So uh, people who are Republicans are saying it's because Democrats don't want football in these states, so people blame Donald Trump. Donald Trump is saying it's Democrats don't want football, so people blame Donald Trump. Like, uh, I don't care. I just want there to be football played, and I think there should be football played. I think there should be football played. I don't think that there's enough uh, data to support there not being football played. And so – that's really all I care about. I, if it, I just want, you know, like I said, I'm not afraid to politically pander at this moment. So I just need Donald J. Trump to hit that retweet button and get those Letterman Road clicks out there for the world to see. Because, uh, you know, I, it sucks that he scooped you, though, Austin. Yeah, well, you know, we just had, the president and I had a handshake agreement about trying to coordinate a release. And that's, that's fine. Um, that's a totally normal thing uh, for a sports website to do. Um, <laughs> But it's also, you know, Spencer, you said it's a political issue. It's a football issue. Nobody cares about saving the Pac-12. Uh, they're completely irrelevant to this, this conversation in the national landscape. Mm -hmm. And everyone is trying to make the college football playoff great again. And Ohio State has to be part of that uh, for everyone to get their money's worth out of this season. Maybe if the, maybe if the Pac-12 would have raised an issue and the players wouldn't have been so gung-ho about not signing the waivers and being against everything the Pac-12 wanted to do to make them safe, you know, if, if they would have raised the issue, maybe this would be – the same thing would be going on in the Pac-12. But they haven't. They haven't said a word since the Pac-12 canceled football. They were just like, I, yeah, okay, I guess I this is our fate. I think point, Spencer, because what, what has generated the most attention? Well, there's two things. Uh, Justin Fields was a part of that, that group of players that spoke out publicly that was led by Trevor Lawrence. And President Trump uh, uh, reached out and I believe had a conversation with Trevor Lawrence about that. And then that followed one week later – uh, you wrote about Justin Fields and that petition that I believe got, you know, somewhere around 300,000 people signing it. That brought great awareness specifically to Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence and the Big Ten or the ACC and their efforts. And you're right, the Pac-12 hasn't done as much of that. And even if it has, it, it certainly doesn't move the needle on the way that, you know, the richest conference in college football does. Yeah. They, you guys know that I used to live on the West Coast. Oh, uh, somewhere near Arizona, I think. Yeah, so here's Burn. the truth. The, there's the thing uh, out there. They don't really care about football because in the fall in California, you can still go to the beach, okay? <laughs> like they – not having football doesn't ruin the state of California like it ruins 20 towns in Ohio, okay? Like football is not just football in the Midwest, and people need to understand that. Hollywood is still going to survive in California – without football. Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, they need football. Like it, 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 you can't have no football and expect there not to be a significant 
problem for the states. I mean, it, it matters to people. It's not a, it's, it's a religion. It's, it's, it's a belief. It's not like just a thing to do on Saturday. And I, and I think people it, understand the difference. If it takes political pressure to get the big 10 to do the right thing, that's fine. Because we, we just saw in the last couple of days in Berm's home state in Michigan, the MHSAA reversed their course. They said, okay, we can have football because we have new information. You're allowed to get new information and you're allowed to change your mind you're allowed to do the right thing. And I think that's the biggest lesson that we've learned. If it takes a little bit of pressure from political, from across political aisles, that's fine. But as long as the big 10 is doing the right thing and doing what's best for the student athletes, then, you know, nobody can really argue with this. And again, it just took a little bit of political pressure. And here we are, we're talking about a possible, I think you said in your story, Austin, October start. Berm, he called that your home state and not where you live. Listen, man, I'm not going to, I'm not going to engage in this, this little petty conversation. We're talking about important things like politics, all right? Uh, I'm, <laughs> just, not, I'm not I, interested in Spencer's little jokes. I just, right? wanted, to I am sure, in, I just wanted to make sure that, that you're aware of what happened there. Spencer, what, what I'm interested very feisty, in is very making feisty. sure people understand if the Big Ten is starting football in November, the Big Ten is not starting football. So if, they, if there's going to be Ohio State football and competing for a national championship this year, it has to start in October. Has to. There so. is now a chance of that. I, this, is, again, is not a prediction, and I've said over and over that if there was a, a, a positive development towards that, we would be the first uh, or happiest or both to report it, and there has been. Uh, this is now on the table. Uh, the Big Ten presidents, ADs, uh, a, a sort of revamped medical staff that now includes Dr. Borchers from Ohio State, leading uh, sources told Letterman Monroe that he has had a more active role in the Big Ten conversations now. Um, this is this is trending in a, in a way that I didn't think that it would. Uh, certainly a week ago, uh, definitely not a month ago, but it is now uh, a potential option that the Big Ten fall season can be salvaged. We'll continue to report on that with as much new information as we get as this story continues to develop. The President of the United States is now involved. He's talked to Commissioner Kevin Warren of the Big Ten to try and get some tests in the hands of the league and games on the field. That's Jeremy Birmingham. Over there, Spencer Holbrook. I'm Austin Ward. This has been Rapid Reaction, brought to you by Byers Auto. Stay with us at LettermanRoad.com for all the latest updates on Ohio State and Big Ten football.